Welcome everyone, this is Shadow Drake, and now we're, well, this is going to be about talking about the counterflows. Now, particularly the reason uh, counterflows are very helpful is because they are meant to swap the temperatures between the cold and the hot side. And so while, you know, I, I made some tests on my own for, from the gas to gas and just to see how the overall behavior would be because uh, gas to liquid, liquid liquid would probably have completely different behaviors. At least just so that I could see the bottom line. And so the setup for this one was fairly simple. I, I had spawned a cold tank over there. That's roughly zero Celsius. And yes, I, I leveled up and added signs. And I have a hot tank over there of 100 Celsius pollutants. And then those two temperature ratings for the out temps are just the results after the flow. And we got a dial here that tells me exactly how much moles of gas I want to push through. So, for example, if I want two moles, I'll set it to two. Then I just pull the lever crunk, and two moles of gas will be going through. And we should be seeing roughly the changes. So that means from 0 Celsius, we're getting to approximately 68 Celsius. From 100 Celsius, we're dropping down to 31-ish Celsius. And looking at the counterflow, you see the two moles, fairly simple, fairly standard, and I used it to get my data. Now, the things that I was interested data-wise from the gas to gas is to see how much one mole of uh, flow corresponds, because that's typically about what phase change devices do. They, they tend to hover a little under a mole to about a mole, maybe a little bit higher to two. Uh, and for my Vulcan cooling towers that I kind of tend to do, it tends to be about 10 moles of liquids that go through. But I'm also trying to keep in mind the fact that uh, that's liquids coming through, so it's not quite good. But And as you can see, how much transfer corresponds to the flow. As you can see, the 10 moles is actually pretty not great at least compared to the two whereas if I go to about four moles you'll see that more ex more heat is capable of exchanging between the two sorry and I believe from the files from bruising around in the discord it's about a 70% transfer rate and the more even the flow the better the transfer um, like I said, I wanted to check one mole. And I think that ended up being around 50%. So anyways, uh, overall results between the gas counterflow. Uh, I have it on this board right here. So I did basically three separate tests. It's a trap, it's a trap. Like I said, three separate tests, and I had three different counterflow setups I did offline, uh, just to see. Um, at one mole, I got roughly 50% transfer. The best transfer was around four moles going between the counterflows, and that came out cr uh, close to 80%. And now the falloff, I'll have to explain. Uh, I considered the falloff around the point where you get 50% transfer. And for one counterflow, that was about 14. So those are my results for the single. And then offline, I did my two counterflows and three counterflows. Now, uh, what I expected for hypothesis for extra counterflows is taking this percentage and multiplicative, you know, multiply whatever's left and finish it out. And as you can see, the results were not not the case. Uh, again, with one flow, my best uh I got roughly an 82.5% transfer. So even if I was taking 50% of 50% being 25%, I would have expected about 75%. It kind of does come up close, but it does come up a little bit better. So there's probably more going on. Um, the best was kind of between 3 and 4, and that came up to about 89% transfer. So as you can see, I got almost 90% thermal transfer between hot and cold. And now the fall off, I had to note my three numbers. So I wanted to find out roughly when the, uh, the flow equaled one mole. And so at about seven moles, it got to about 80%. Uh, 
at the 14 moles for the previous 50%, I got 66%. So that already tells me that the extra counter flow definitely helped to tighten the tighten the range, get better transfer and results. And it took about 27 moles of transfer before I got back down to 50% transfer rate. And so with those numbers in mind, that's when, when I went to the three counter flow to see just whether it got better or if I'm starting to see some pretty bad dimin diminishing returns. And so once again, three counter flows, one mole transfer, got to about 90% transfer, which is actually pretty good. For three counter flows, one mole transfer, that's pretty good. Uh, the best, again, kind of hovering between three and four moles, and it settled at about 92.5%. So you can see I got significantly less output out of it at around that point. And once again, I did the fall-off range, and so to match one mole, it took about five to six moles to get to about 90%, which kind of makes sense because now, now my transfer rate has got to be better, so it's, you know, my parabola, my upside-down parabola is going to get tighter, uh, Gaussian distribution, something like that. Um, checking 14 moles from the first counter flow, and I got 75% transfer, which is pretty interesting that it took two of them to hit 75%, so that's something entirely and then to get exactly 50 percent of transfer i had to be somewhere between 42 and 43 moles of transfer so what does this tell me uh honestly one counter flow can get pretty good if you get if you if you start to hover around the four mole range now this is gas to gas L let me restate that this is gas to gas counter flow this is not uh gas to liquid which is kind of what i'm more interested in but i needed to see baseline so it seems like if you get to about 4 moles of transfer, you get a pretty decent heat exchange rate. And it seems to hold true, and probably might hold true if you keep adding more counterflows. But it seems like you do hit diminishing re returns the more you go. And so it's probably not as worth it to expand your pipe network to keep going high. However, if you're going to do the extreme ranges, like for example, pushing a lot of gases through your counterflows... You definitely want more, because as you can see, it only took 14 moles of transfer to get 50% transfer with one. It took 27 moles to get for two, and somewhere between 42-43 to get 50% thermal transfer. And the only reason I'm concerned about 50% is because theoretically, uh, at least in my mind, a direct heat exchanger will try to equalize temps, and so they'll try to meet somewhere in the middle. And that's kind of why I was going for 50%. Uh, and so as you can see, the more counterflows you have, the more flow you can push through to achieve that. So you, in, in a sense, you start to widen the, the distribution. So I know there's not much test here, but uh, when I started to do this on the liquid to gas, I had completely different results. And so we're just going to go and start to see what those ended up looking like so let me swap to those setups all right we're back now this is the liquid counterflow setup because it's kind of more what we would expect with the phase change devices so the setup is very similar except that now we have a hot liquid pollutants almost at 100 c some evaporation occurs and cold pollutants at almost zero c now these are gases and I had to make sure that this is low enough pressure to prevent condensation to mess with results and as you can see I kind of tried a little bit and uh, my results are going to be pretty muddied because I realized my setup is inherently flawed to some degree and so even trying to see what one mole of fl one molar flow between them I, I start to see issues because while here on the counter flow I have gas flowing at one mole uh, the liquids is obviously more, and the way that that is explained is because while I might be only putting one mole of liquid through, uh, the problem is we have pressure and gas as well, and I got 4.86 megapascals, and when it cools down, uh, some of, that means we have a lower pressure here, and so therefore some of that gas will naturally flow in there, and that's why this is not going to be a perfect one to two. This is also why it shows why my gas warms up from zero to almost 93. So I'm kind of having like a false hyper efficient setup 
and a, for the gas side and terrible cooling on the liquid side. And this is probably something that will be seen because uh, after all I'm having condensation here and that 1.65 kilojoules is a lot of thermal energy that is getting pushed in here. Uh, let's see. So if I try to do that math, uh, 1650, you know, if I, and let's see, pollutant is 24.8 joules per Kelvin per mole. So that means I'm expecting to drop about 66 Kelvin, but keeping in mind that. I'm only moving about, let's say, 2, so technically I'm dropping 33 Celsius, so I'm going from, what, maybe 100, dropping maybe 33 down? Supposedly is, that, is what it says? So, that kind of leads to the fact that it's not a very strong thermal exchange on the liquid side. But then again, maybe if I fix this setup a little bit better, I can see that. But at least from the gas side, I see that quite a lot gets exchanged, which is a pretty good, at least that's a pretty good result. And so, honestly, I'm kind of at a loss for how to fix this. I, I think I need an expansion valve, condensation valve setup to move only liquids across. But the problem with that is still the fact that I will have pressure and gas that's either going to condense or evaporate and so uh, it's gonna be hard for me to get a very accurate reading on this and true to form the more I added the more exchange happened and the better the temperatures kind of separated so I can't quite call this a good conclusion I know it works and I know it exchanges a good bit and this is kind of a good reason why for phase change devices you can't have such a drastic amount of extra yeah of, of extra condensation and evaporation because it, it does affect things hmm anyway so this was one setup so now we're gonna I'm gonna repeat this test and show what happens when it's actually colder liquids and warmer gases so let's we'll be right back All right, trust me, stuff changed. So now we have cold liquids, hot gases. And so now we're going to kind of see the opposite end of the spectrum to see just how well it is for liquids are for cooling gases. Uh, same thing, series Celsius, approximately liquid pollutants. Man, that is hard to get, right? Because evaporation happens and 100 Celsius uh, gaseous pollutants. And kind of the same thing, I wanted to see what roughly one molar flow is and this one's actually better because of course uh, when you are heating up liquids the pressure and gas increases so therefore I'm not gonna get problems with that so now I can have a slightly more true exchange rate but as you can kinda see the gas actually still cools pretty well so that's really good to see uh, and we got from negative 2 to approximately 66, maybe a little higher. Because I'm going to have issues here with the fact that, uh, of course, I have phase change happening here and it's going to muddy my results. So that's really truly the hard part for getting a sense for how things work for the liquid. So I can, I can only really, we can only really be assured that gases are affected for sure. And liquids, maybe not as much. And so, even from here, 3.12 kilojoules, only one mole is changed, so 3,120 kilojoules divided by the specific heat of pollutants, 24.8. That means, I can't, that just does not seem right, the fact that I am having 125 degree temperature change. That just, uh, that just doesn't seem right. Right. <sighs> Unless I am factoring the fact that I'm having a latent heat of 2 kilojoules. Okay, so, I mean, even if we do that. So, remove 2 kilojoules. So, 1 divided by 20... 
four point eight. 45. Okay, so if I remove the two kilojoules from the one mole, that means 45. So, just negative 1, 2, 73. Okay, yep. Throwing in the towel. Liquids make this hard, man. Okay, so what do we know? Uh, yes, we affect things. We can definitely cool gases. Uh, probably other tests I would need to do is check it with different specific heats and. Yeah. This kind of makes me wonder that you could actually probably make a really good cooling system with water. Uh, possibilities here. Anyways, so with that, we've covered the counterflows. We tried to, I at least got very more easily verifiable, verifiable results from the gas to gas. Uh, liquids is a whole nother story, other than the fact that they work. And I think I ran out of gas. Oh, no, I didn't. And the gas is, we got good effects. Alright, so, uh... To sum up, more counter flows expand kind of your range for how much you can transfer with really high or really low range. Because it allowed us to be able to push more through the counter flows. But it also allowed us to get better results from the four, let's see, the four moles of transfer between them. I really wish I would know exactly how that is. And then, of course, liquids have something else going on with them that affects their flow rate. Ah, <sighs> anyways. So when we come back, I, we are going to start with custom evaporation chambers. And now I have two designs to show you, so I'll do the first design. And I'll go over their benefits and drawbacks of each. But, yeah. Thank you for your time. Hope to see you then.